Okay, let's look at the most recent post I posted for you guys. This one deals with this next step we're going to be doing, which is to how to engage in analysis. Now, hopefully you guys have some familiar with summarization, but I'll bring that up in my wrap-up post uh, for tomorrow on Friday. But first off, just really quickly, if you need a starting point, just of course, since we're really talking about uh, report one, if you simply go back to report one, I even started... Um, Oops, for some reason that didn't link properly. I'll have to check that and correct it. But if you go back to report one, you'll see here I even talk about textual analysis and what analysis is. And I try to give you some working questions that you might use to start exploring the text more deeply beneath the surface. In fact, if you go back to the video down here at the very bottom about this, you'll remember that I even talked about Jay Lee's art style as an aesthetic choice. And if we were to deeply go into that more into more an analytical approach to that, we might discuss, okay, well, why would someone find this aesthetically pleasing and why would someone not find it aesthetically pleasing? So that's a starting point to consider. Now, what I've done in this post is I've tried to present you guys with some materials. This first one links out to uh, an analyzing of visual texts. And this one very specifically talks about, and it reiterates some of the stuff that we've already talked a little bit about in the opening uh, PowerPoint slash video, but also some of the stuff that McLeod is going to talk about. Gives you some information again here about some of the material they're talking about, um, cartoonification, things of that nature. So some of this will overlap a little bit with some of the stuff we'll be doing with McLeod. So you'll see some... Um, later it re reconstruction of this in fact if you go in here uh, this is understanding comics you could also deconstructing images and that kind of stuff as well so feel free to take a look at that a little bit closer the idea is to try and help you get a perspective so if we are visually analyzing this or if we are simply analyzing this analyzing alone is simply looking at the story and for that I did include a video here that I do want to note is apparently for a high school senior class but it still has some good information really focuses on this idea of how how and why when we are looking at a text how is it doing what it's doing or how is it communicating with us why is it able to communicate with us um, or with other people how is it reaching out um, what is it trying to do this goes back to the basic simple premise that I oftentimes give my 101 students about Anal analysis when I simply had them analyze a comic book and I say if you want to take a real simple approach to it and not make it so complicated consider these three things one what was the purpose and that makes you have to think about okay why did the authors write this why did they choose to tell this story okay audience who are they trying to reach? Who might be or find this story appealing or engaging, even if it's not a person who is perhaps a, pot a potential audience? And then thirdly, what is the message? Is there a message? Is there something in the story that they are trying uh, to communicate, whether it be something simply personal um, or universal? there could be different levels to that okay and the idea behind those three basic tents is to sort of help you make it easy and of course you could approach it this way if you wanted to and i even note here you might want to skip ahead to about 136 137 in the video where it really gets into the stuff and they choose to look at the catcher and the rye now beneath this i have a video that very specifically focuses in on comic book visually how to read visually analyze comics and it talks about elements and it uses action comics number one as its kind of touchstone point about things that get done and then if you actually watch this this video is itself an analysis of why the authors made choices they did they talk one specific point here i'm going to play part of the video and skip forward here um where is that sequence yeah they talk about right here they even talk about this distracted by the background, and when Superman is talking with someone, behind him isn't something colorful, complicated, or amazing, just a bland, solid color. In this original Superman, the graphics tend to be simple and straightforward so that the reader may focus on the characters and their actions. 
From all this, we can deduce that Shuster's drawings are meant to narrate the story, but not to distract from the final moral of the story. It is this type of visual analysis that you, as a reader, need to use in order to attribute a comic style to the author's purpose. Okay, so if you see there, there's a bit of an analysis going on very specifically in how they're handling things. So this is some stuff that I want you to consider because this is going to be a crucial next step when you are reading your graphic novel. And something I'm going to bring up in a video lecture tomorrow specifically is going to dive in and ask you to be taking annotated notes on your reading. So, so hopefully you won't have to go back too many times to the original text, but hopefully if you take detailed notes, it will give you a starting point. And if you do need to go back, it'll make it easier for you to return to a certain section or point in the story if you need to reaffirm pieces of information. And as always, if there are any questions or any issues that come up or any further development about this, and this can tie into the recent forum I posted on Moodle concerning the issue of the graphic novel selection and report one, I have a qu uh, forum up on Moodle right now dealing with uh, setup to design to address questions concerning those things. Please feel free to interact, ask, make comments, etc.